Uh, I don't know if you can guess where I'm from. Uh, because I don't think I hide it very well. Uh, but I was, born, I was just born in the RVI, uh, just, over, uh, just over there, um, 24 long, long years ago. Um, and I, I might, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about um, you know, how, I, how I became uh, to be wearing a shirt tucked into me pants working for a church. Like, how, how did that happen to a lad who lived on a council estate in Gateshead? Um, so basically, um, I, w I was brought up uh, I was brought up in Winlayton, uh, my mum and my dad, uh, I'm, I'm an only child, which explains a lot um, about my personality, very needy, I'm very, very needy, um, but yeah, I, I had a loving upbringing, um, my parents, parents aren't Christians, uh, they would say they are, they'd say that they're Christians, they'd say that they're Christians because they fill it out on a form, or because, you know, they, they, their dad took them to church once when they were five years old. Like, that's the reason they're a Christian. They're a Christian because they're white and they live in England. That's, that's why they think they're Christians. And they'll mention Jesus now and then, but it, it, he had no bearing on, on, on the life. Um, had no bearing on my life for 17 years. Uh, I didn't care about God. Um, we never went to church whatsoever. Um, but there were times, um, I'll not get into them massively, um, I, like I said, I had a, I had a loving upbringing, my me, me parents loved us, uh, but they didn't love each other, it was, it was, it was hard growing up with them, um, it, there was a lot of nastiness in the house uh, towards one another, um, my dad struggles with drink a lot as well, um, and so I, I wasn't massively naive growing up, I, I, I saw uh, and I dealt with it with a few things um, that you know children, most children probably didn't have to have to go through. So I had my eyes open from from a very young age, and I and I struggled with it because, like I said, I'm an only child. You know, I had no one to talk to. Um, so you know, I, I became very worried as a child. I'd um, yeah, I just get worried. I used to have a really big phobia of buttons, like. How weird is that? Like, the way my, my, my anxiety would express itself was really odd. I used to be really scared of buttons and things like that. Uh, but as my teenage years got closer, my parents got divorced, um, and me and my mum moved over uh, to Lobley Hill, um, and I went to Emmanuel College. Has anyone heard of Emmanuel College in here? Um, great school, absolutely class school. Um, and that's where I first heard the gospel. I first heard about Jesus there, and I thought, what a load of rubbish, eh? What a load of rubbish. I'm not listening to this rubbish, this tripe. I'm, I'm a scientist. You know, I, I'm intelligent. I'm going to, I like physics. I used to be obsessed with the planets and things like that. You know, like, no one can believe in Jesus if you, you know, you believe in evolution, you believe in, in, in physics and things like that. Um, and, I, and I didn't care. I, I really, I can remember finding one of my books um, in RE, and I'll not tell you what I said, but it was covered in swear words. Um, I never handed that book in, obviously. Um, it was covered in swear words about, about Jesus. I was like, basically, I'm not believing this, is what, is what it said. Um, but as life went on, my mates around us, you know, you get in your teenage years, you start wondering, what, what is the crack with life? I mean, what is the point of this? You know, you're born one day. It's mental, isn't it? You know, none of us, like, actually, like, when we sit down and think about it, we, we just existed one day. What is the point? What is the point? And my mates were trying to get us to go down the line of, you know, uh, or you go out, have loads, have loads of sex, drink, drink loads, um, you know, just go out. And it's hedonism, the word hedonism, that's what it is. It's basically living for pleasure, and that's what the aim of life is, and you live for yourself. And you be nice to people, and you know, if God might be there, and if you're a good person, you go to heaven. That's what the crack with life is. And I just didn't buy it. I just didn't buy it. Uh, like I said, from I think some of it, the reason I mentioned my upbringing, um, I wasn't naive. I realized what the end goal of misusing alcohol was. I did not want that. I didn't want that for me or for my me, for me future wife if she exists or my future children if they exist. I did not want that life. And I started getting really anxious about death because we're all going to die, <laughs> literally. We're all going to die, and I, I couldn't sleep. And I was going to sleep for um, you know, like four in the morning, sitting there shaking, like I'm going to die someday. What is the crack with life? Does, is there anything after death? If there is, can I believe in it? What, what is going on? Um, 
And then I started listening in assembly. I had seven years of listening to Emmanuel rabbit on about Jesus. Who is this Jesus bloke? He lived 2,000 years ago in the Middle East. Why do I care? And I started listening because I wanted answers to the question that bugged us the most. I'm going to die. What is the crack? Um, so anyway, I, I listened to One Assembly by Mr. Hall, absolute legend, um, and it changed my life. It was about prayer. We've just been talking about prayer at the tables a little bit there. Um, and he, sat, he stood there and basically rabbited on about the Bible, but I wasn't really listening. And he got a little bit about, you know, if you go home tonight, give God a chance and pray to him. And I guarantee you, he'll get an answer. And I was lonely. I was, I was an only child. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, some of the suffering that we went through and I was an anxious lad and I was like, right, I just need to give him a chance. I need to give this Jesus a chance. If, he, if he's up there, he's going to answer us. And uh, that's the first time I ever prayed in my whole life. The, ho the first time ever. I was about 17 years old. And he was there. He didn't go, ooh, hello, Craig, I've been waiting for you. Didn't, like, I didn't hear an audible voice, but I really got a sense of who Jesus was. And the way I actually learned about God was through him speaking to us through the Bible. So I was too scared. I was like... Uh, I know I'm dressed like this, but believe it or not, I was actually quite cool at school. Um, and, uh, you know, if you, if you become a Christian in the co cool group, you, no, that's your social life destroyed. So I was a little bit scared about people finding out, so I downloaded the Bible on my phone, and I would read it every night, every night, just read the Bible, every night. And I found out about the best news in the world, the best news, and it was true. The bit that got us about the Bible more than anything is it was just true. Every aching bone and want in my body and in my spirit and everything that had gone on in my childhood and when I when I put it to the bible it wasn't just God saying oh I hate you you aren't good enough it was it was God literally saying this is what life is like and I've come down to make it right in Jesus I didn't understand the Jesus stuff basically I, I, I should hurry up because I could go on for ages sorry you probably want to get home and I'll ask I'll hurry up I'll hurry up Basically, I started going to church. My mate, Matthew, who used to be a Muslim, that's a story for a different day. Um, he became a Muslim when he went on holiday to Egypt. He's like me, he's from Gator and that. Um, anyway, he decided that wasn't the truth and wanted to take us to church. So we found a church called Hillsong. It was NTLC back in the day. And um, I went along to Hillsong and I was bricking it, man. I was bricking it on the way. Never been to church in my life. And uh, I started going weeks, week after week. And uh, a song we kept singing was called I Surrender. Uh, I'll not sing it for you. Uh, great song. And that's what it was. That's what I needed to do. It was all right if this Jesus stuff was right, but I had to make a decision about me and Jesus. Was I going to surrender my life up to him? And I was like, I have to. The, the evidence, it's overwhelming. I have to give my life to Jesus. And... Uh, it was absolutely mental. I got wrecked for it at school. We had three free periods on a Friday afternoon. I would get destroyed in them, like, oh, Craig, why have you become a Christian and that? I didn't tell my mom and dad I went to church. I told them I went to Nando's. Anyone been to Nando's before in here? Not the, quite the right crowd, is it? Um, I used to go to Nando's every single week, and I never put on any weight, so I can't believe she actually believed what I was doing. Anyway, long story short, I came to JPC um, a, f a few years later, and... Uh, I heard the Bible um, faithfully preached, and this is where the Jesus stuff, because I, I believed in God at that point, and I believed Christianity was true, but I didn't really know why. It just felt right, you know? And uh, I was sitting in the pews in there, and uh, got welcomed in. Uh, Jonathan's son, Tom Redfern, um, you know, like, there was people my age here. Um, I couldn't believe it. And I went in there, and week after week, I was taught the gospel, the best news, fully, and I was listening in the Holy Spirit, you know, Jesus entered my life by his Holy Spirit. He changed my life. He made us want not to sin, not to disobey him. He, he made us want to, to follow him. And um, honestly, like, that's basically seeped into what my whole life's about now because I literally just think the one reason I was saved is so I can evangelize the Geordies. So I can tell people like you, you might not be a Geordie now, but I'll tell you anyway. But the Geordies, this place, Newcastle, is barren. There's not many people that believe in Jesus up here. And the thing is, he's the only way. There's no other way that we can be saved other through the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's no other way. And we all, everyone in this room, 
I know you're all like basically in here, everyone in here is older than me, you're wiser than me in life. So don't take my word for it. Like open up the Bible and listen to who God is through the Bible and, um, and trust in him because he's the only way we get eternal life. Um, yeah, that's about it. I can wrap it on about how he's changed my life and all of that. Um, you know, I've, I've went through ups and downs uh, in, my Christian, in my Christian life. Very, very anxious. Being very anxious recently. I've started some medication for that. Um, and you know what? Yeah, I, I was off work last, uh, earlier in the year for, for two and a half months, actually. I was really struggling. And uh, Jesus, again, proved himself to be firm to be the firmest foundation you could ever trust in. So there's just evidence in my life there for you. Um, but I know if you trust in Jesus, I'll say what Mr. Hall said to me. If you go home tonight and pray, I'll guarantee you you'll get an answer. Thank you.